Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Martin Walker. I am Head of Marketing at Experience Oxfordshire. Um, given the time, I know we've got 12 minutes, so um, and we're very keen on 12 minutes. So just to cover three, three main things, really. Um, very briefly is who we are and what we do. Um, a, a, a bit of a look at who visits Oxfordshire um, nationality-wise, um, and then also how we kind of drill down and use the data that we have um, to then go on and target specific markets. So I will um, carry on with this. So very, very briefly, Experience Oxfordshire, um, only in the, um, when we, at registration, somebody said to me, um, are you part of um, Oxford Inspires? So Oxford Inspires, visit Oxfordshire. Some of the names that you may um, be familiar with in the past, we, they are all now as part of Experience Oxfordshire. Um, so just to, to make that clear for you, for you all, uh, we, are, we are now what we call a destination management organisation. These are um, throughout the country, um, county-based usually, um, and they look to uh, promote the county in our, um, in our respect, Oxfordshire, to a local, national and international audience. Um, we are a not-for-profit company. Um, we are a partnership organisation. Um, I think there's a few of our partners in the room today. Um, and that's a, a real focus for us nowadays because um, funding, uh, the realities of funding um, through local authorities um, is quite understandably changing. So um, partnership is the, the way forward for ourselves and for a lot of our similar organisations across the country. Um, and as I say, we're not for profit. It means that we don't actually um, run everything just to break even. Um, we, you know, profit is not a bad thing, uh, but it's just what we do with that profit um, to reinvest it in promoting um, Oxfordshire to those audiences that I've uh, just mentioned. So, um, quick stat on uh, the, the uh, value of the visitor economy. Um, I won't read those all out, but this is from, a, uh, from the most recent economic impact study um, for 2014. Um, so, it just shows you um, how many people visit and uh, that contribution to uh, the local economy. So hopefully you can appreciate its importance. Um, so it's kind of enough about us, um, more about who actually visits Oxfordshire. Um, I know as we move into kind of the busy high season with visitors and we all hear different um, languages being spoken in the city and throughout the county. Um, and it's always interesting to look at the, the, the stats that we have uh, just to show the, the split between um, visitors from the UK, domestic visitors, we get an incredible amount of people, um, 20, 26.1 million, and then international visitors as well. Um, we're a very popular destination. Um, I don't want to uh, death by PowerPoint by any means, but I just thought I'd just dropped a few graphs in just to show you how the difference um, and the importance of the different type of visitors that come here. You can see how many people come for a day trip um, and then the equivalent day trip spend. Um, and then also just to highlight the 2% um, of overseas visitors and how much they actually spend um, while they're here. So that just gives you a kind of flavor of um, how we use the data that we have and how we can kind of drill down further and target specific audiences. So. Um, just before I go into the next slide, um, does anybody know which, nice, which nationalities um, visit Oxfordshire the most? I don't know if anybody may have an idea. The what, sorry? US. US, yeah. Def Middle East. Um, yes, US. Um, I'll flick, flick on to the next slide and I'll show you the um, top visitors. We're just waiting for the 2015 stats, but... Um, yeah, US visitors. Um, somebody mentioned the Chinese visitors. We are expecting 2015. Um, they will certainly be in the top 10. Um, but as you can see, um, France and Germany are consistently second and third. Um, and then also um, a few other Australian visitors as well seem to be um, very uh, consistent visitors to the county. So, um, yeah, just shows you um, the different nationalities. So, Using this data, I just thought I'd move on and just show you the difference between um, visitors from the US and France, just compare the two of them. They are the top two for 2014. Um, very similar visitor numbers. Um, 
as you can see there. But you can see the difference, um, difference in spend is... Um, uh, I never expected it, actually. I've looked at these um, stats a few times, and it still amazes me, the difference between the two. I think there are a few ge geographical differences which affect the journeys um, that people take when they come from the US and, respe and respectively from France. Uh, we'll come to that later. But um, again, I think it just um, emphasizes a point of the data that we have and um, the kind of importance of um, US visitors, basically, to, uh, to Oxfordshire, as you can tell. Um, to carry on this comparison, and um, bear with me on this slide, um, just to look at the journey purpose, um, again, to show you the kind of data that we have, um, which I find very interesting. Hopefully, some of you also do find it interesting as well. Um, as you can see, um, the French do like to um, come here um, for, for holidays, basically, mainly. Um, I won't read out all the different stats, but you can see the, the breakdown of journey purpose there. Um, VFR, just for reference, is Visiting Friends and Relatives, um, just to break down that acronym for you. Um, so, as you can see, quite a few business uh, visitors from uh, the US as well. So, that gives you a breakdown. Um, I think this is also interesting, um, the duration of stay um, between the two. I think this, again, comes back to um, geographical location. I think, you know, practically speaking, if you come in all the way from the US, um, you will stay here for longer um, and make the most of your, your trip. But as you can see, um, lots, um, plenty of visitors from the US stay between 4 to 14 nights. Um, I think, again, the proximity of France to um, the UK, as I'm sure that reciprocates from when we go to Paris or other cities within France. It's not our one and only trip there. We may go back there. Um, over the years, so I think this certainly affects the journey patterns um, that we can see, but um, again, very interesting for us um, to look at who we target moving forward, so I will move on. Um, just to draw a few conclusions that we have um, from looking at these top two visitors, um, as you can see, the, vis the US visitors stay a lot longer in the county. Um, you know, the length of stay is really important, basically. Um, it's quite an obvious point. The longer people stay, um, the more they spend in the local economy. Hotel stays. Um, and very importantly for us as well, Oxford is the big draw. Um, it is world-class, I think, is an overused term. But I think, you know, we genuinely have a world-class world attraction um, in Oxford. Um, but it's really important that we um, push people out of Oxford as well. Um, and go to the Cotswolds or um, further, further afield in the county um, to generate you know, the benefit for the wider, wider county's economy. So you can see the US, um, the US do this. The US visitors um, do, from anecdot anecdotal and research, tend to come to Oxford for two or three days um, and then head out to the Cotswolds um, and extend their stay. As you can see, 67% of them stay between 4 to 14 days. Um, and spend an average of £785, which is um, uh, more than welcome. I'm sure we'd all agree. Um, and then French visitors, 67% um, um, stay between one and seven days, and they spend, um, I think, as a result of the shorter stay, £276. Um, I don't want in any way to um, say that we don't want to welcome French visitors at all. I think when you compare this to the day visitor spend from... Um, UK visitors, they are very much welcome and definitely um, should be encouraged. I just thought it was very interesting to show from the top two um, visitors, nationality-wise to the county, the difference in uh, patterns of travel and, and spend. So, given those two insights, um, kind of comes back to what we do um, as an organisation and how we target um, different nationalities. We, you know, we're an we're org organisation that... Um, doesn't have a massive budget, so we, you know, we have to kind of look at the best ways to do things um, and the best ways to target people uh, and certain nationalities. So we have those two, um, the US and French um, markets. Um, we have, we work with a consortium called England's Heritage Cities, uh, which, as the name suggests, is um, the likes of Oxford, um, Greenwich, York. Um, and Durham, 
I can't think of all of them at the moment, but those the, the heritage cities, basically. As a, co as a consortium, we worked together to secure funding. Um, we did this very well um, last year to secure some fun funding through the Heritage is Great, Great Britain campaign that is uh, very much backed by the UK government. Um, we secured some funding to, to target French visitors, both at home when they're searching the web, thinking about where to go on their next holiday. Um, and also the second market for this was also French visitors who come to London, because London is a bit of a trap for vi visitors, as you may suspect, um, to get them out of the capital um, and come up to Oxford. Um, so there's kind of two audiences there um, that we're looking to target at the moment. Um, I'd say, kind of as an aside to that, um, the competition, some people say to me, doesn't Oxford market itself, which is quite um, infuriating sometimes. Um, but um, I think in historically that has always been the kind of um, case for us that we kind of rested on our laurels in the past, um, whereas you'll see a lot of competition from the likes of Bristol or Bath or Bath, depending on where you're from, um, and different cities kind of on the... Um, outskirts of London comp competing for international and domestic visitors. So it's, a, it's much more of a competitive uh, landscape now for cities. I think both Oxford and Cambridge can't just assume that people will default to come to these two cities in the future. So um, as a result, we need to um, compete basically and make sure people are, are fully aware of all the many um, generally world-class things that we have in the city and the county. So. Um, that's an aside as to what we're trying to do in, uh, with the French visitors in London to encourage them to come up. You know, as we've seen from previous presentations, we're only an hour, genuinely an hour away from London. Um, and this message is key to this campaign that we're running at the moment. So there's, um, there's a microsite, there's banner advertising over uh, in, in, in France on various media outlets. Uh, we hosted a press trip um, about three or four weeks ago to... Um, a French journalist who writes for a, current, current, a very good current affairs magazine, uh, which we've got some good coverage from. So generally, won't go into all the details, but that's um, a way that we've secured funding and the, the means by which we're targeting and encouraging those French visitors. Um, the aim is to increase visitors by 10,000. That's across the, old her the entire Heritage Cities um, network, but I think given Oxford's proximity to London, we will be um, much better placed. So um, that's one, one side from you. And then also on, on an international visitor side, I just wanted to uh, highlight the work that we do with Visit Britain um, as, a, as an organisation. The, the, you know, can the kind of remit that we have um, is to encourage international visitors, but with the budgets um, that we have, we really need to tap into the excellent work they do. Um, this is a campaign, OMGB Moments, that they are running very heavily in the US because um, it doesn't, doesn't just apply to Oxfordshire. This is a general um, target market for Visit Britain is US visitors and the incredible spend that they bring um, and also in other markets. So I will just leave you with this, if hopefully this plays, just to give a flavour of the... Um, marketing that they're doing over in the US. Oh dear. Hopefully you're getting the gist. So, yeah, I mean, that's a campaign that we're... I'm not claiming responsibility for that campaign. I wish I could. Um, but that's what we can tap into. We've got a bit of the Cotswolds in there, but we are working on getting um, a bit of Oxford in there as a uh, OMGB moment, which I certainly think they should include. So we're working on that. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's it from me. Hopefully that gives a flavour of um, who comes to Oxfordshire, what we do, and uh, how we're trying to encourage more people to come to this beautiful county. Thank you very much.